All right, uh, YouTube Nation, we are going to take a parabola and place it into vertex form. So yesterday we did y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, and that's standard form. Do you remember yesterday what you did to find the vertex of a parabola in that form? Negative b divided by 2a. Once you got negative b divided by 2a, how'd you find the y value? You plugged it in, right? And uh, that gave you the vertex. Today, we're going to ask you to find the vertex by doing a different method. And we're going to ask you to place in y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Because when it's in this form, you can look at it and identify the vertex right away. The vertex is just the horizontal shift and the vertical shift. Done. And it's super easy. So how do we take something that looks like this and put it into this form? Well, if you notice, this has a completed square. So we will complete the square. Unfortunately, you're really good at doing that. I'm going to put the constant off to the side, and I'm going to just group x squared minus 6x. The 1 does not complete the square. What is the number that completes the square? Take my 6, divide it by 2, and square it to get 9. So I add 9 to complete the square. You're not allowed to just add 9 to one side of an equation. What else do you have to do? So you would have to add the 9 to the other side. I think that this is what Dane was saying. But he said if you add it to both sides, watch what happens. We don't want our final answer to have a, a 9 plus over here, do we? So once we added the 9, what would we then have to do with it? We would subtract it back over. So notice what the work actually looks like. If we add 9 to this side, and we subtract 9 from that side, they, they would cancel each other out, which means we have a balanced equation, okay? So we maintained balance. I'm not going to cancel them out right now because then I'd be right back where I started. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite it as a completed square now. This is x minus 3 squared minus 8. completed square. What's the direction, up or down? <clears throat> up. What's the vertex? 3, negative 8. Just staring you right in the face. That's what's nice about vertex form. Axis of symmetry is always x equals the x value of the vertex, which is 3. We have our y-intercept as well. If you look at the original equation, you can see that the y-intercept is 1. So I'm going to make an 8 by 8 graph. I plot 3, negative 8. I have an axis of symmetry. <coughs> Goes right through there. I have a y-intercept of 1. I could reflect that over the axis of symmetry to get another point right over here. So there's my graph of my parabola. This one right over here. I took this and I just reflected it across the axis of symmetry. 
If it's symmetrical, we should have one that matches it right on the other side. Not too bad, huh? The key is the completing of the square. Let's try two more examples, and we'll be done for the day. But these are just a slight change. What do you notice is different about this one? Okay, there's not a constant. What else? Okay, it's backwards. The x squared is negative. So I'm going to start by writing this as f of x is equal to negative quantity x squared minus 4x. Everybody okay with my first step? So now what? What do I add to complete the square? I add 4. So if I added 4, what else do I need to do? No. No. And here's why. I allowed you all to go down that road so you'll understand what not to do. We did not just add 4 to this side. This does not have a true value of 4. It has a value of negative 4. You see, right now, if you were to multiply this all out, look at what you have. You would have a negative x squared. You'd have a positive 4x, just like we have here, but we would have a negative 4. So you didn't really just add 4. You have to consider the negative on the outside. So this really had a value of negative 4. So if we subtracted 4 from this side, we should also add 4 to this side, right? So that looks contrary to what we just did. You're like, well, I see a plus 4 and a plus 4, but this really is a negative 4, okay? Better? All right. Completed square. So f of x is... Negative quantity, what? X minus 2 squared plus 4. Now that it's a completed square, we'll identify the direction, the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and the y-intercept. We're not going to find the x-intercepts for this one. I used to make people do that as well, but I felt like you guys had enough on your plate. If you would like to find the x-intercepts for fun, I would encourage you to do so. How's that? What is the direction? Down. What is the vertex? 2, 4. Axis of symmetry. X equals 2. What I like about what Ashley said is she said X equals because it's an equation for a line. She did not just say 2. The Y-intercept, 0. I'm going to make a 4 by 4 graph. I plot 2, 4. The y-intercept is 0. Axis is symmetry right here. As Alexis was stating before, we could take this uh, a point and just mirror it on over to the other side. And we end up with a nicely shaped parabola. What do you think? Not too bad? Last one. Are you ready to get a little bit more confused? Okay. What's different about this one? As a 2 in front, what do you think we'll do with that 2? We'll factor it out, which is like dividing. So f of x is equal to, we factor out the 2, and I'm left with x squared minus 3 over 2 x and the minus one we're just going to keep way back there Willie does that make you feel uncomfortable 
you know, if it was inside the parentheses, then you would have to divide by that two. But when you look at that, it makes a lot of people feel uncomfortable that we, we took a two out of these, but we didn't the one. But just realize, if you took the two times the x squared, what would you get? 2x squared. Take the 2 times the negative 3 abs x, you get the negative 3x. And then the minus 1 is sitting over here. So we've, we've just rewritten it in a way that's going to be useful to us. Okay? And you'll see why in just a second here. All right, got to complete the square. So I take 3 halves, and what do I do to it? 3 halves divided by 2. What's 3 halves divided by 2? 3 halves divided by 2 over 1. Multiply by reciprocal. 3 fourths. 3 fourths squared. 9 sixteenths. Josie is correct. We add 9 sixteenths. But I didn't just add 9 sixteenths. What is the true value of that 9 sixteenths? 18 sixteenths or 9 eighths, right? So if I just added 9 eighths, I should subtract 9 eighths. Good. I'm going to rewrite the 1 as 8 eighths. That way I have common denominators. You guys are doing very well. f of x is 2 times... Looks like we're going to have x minus 3 fourths squared. Minus what? 17 eighths. Question? Direction. Vertex. Three fourths. Negative seventeen eighths. An axis of symmetry. X equals three fourths. You can see from the beginning that the y-intercept is negative 1. So I'm going to make a 3x3 three three graph. I will plot three fourths, which is about which is 0.75. Negative 17 over 8. What would be what would negative 16 over 8 be? Negative 2. So negative 17 over 8 would be negative 2 and 1 eighth. So I'm gonna go three quarters and then negative 2 and 1 eighth. And looks like I have a y-intercept of negative 1. I'm just going to mirror that right on the other side of it. And there's my graph. I know that there was a time where you spent probably a week graphing parabolas. Um, we've, we have kind of these two days, and the vertex form is a new part for you. Um, so we're going to give you an assignment on that. You don't have to worry about these. We'll just skip uh, the application piece altogether and get to that when we do the word problems on Monday, Monday, Monday. Have a good weekend, YouTube.